next okay. speaker is going to be you're probably going to make your last name. Yes, it was right. Correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right. And he's going to be talking about the antibody. Uh, how many of you people were there when we did that field trip about five, six years ago to antibots? How many people thought that was like really cool? <laughs> okay. So this is this is what new, what the what the antibots mutated into. And we'll let uh, Jesse take over. Yeah, I'm gonna try to take over your thing. I uh, thank you. It's always a challenge here trying to get to uh, there. It is. That's what I was looking for. This guy right here. And apply. Come on over. There we go. All right. And F11, and we'll start it up. Thank you. Thanks everybody for their patience. Um, that little bit there. Uh, my name is Jesse Monroy. I'm with Anybots, and I'm ecstatic to be here because uh, when the Homebrew Robotics Club started years ago with Dick Pradner, uh, we were always wondering how we get young people involved. And I see lots and lots of young people here, and I'm really, really happy. Um, I don't see a lot of the old members, but I think they've all gone on to some different successes. And I lost my video. Thank you, Tanner. Yes, let's try this one more time here and see where it's at. No, I want the same monitor. Thank you. Keep this. Close that. F11. I think it was Ubuntu trying to be helpful. It's funny how Ubuntu is more and more like Microsoft every day. <laughs> and so anyway, um, I'm glad to be here. And I've been working in uh, software and web business in uh, about a year ago, six, eight months ago, my partner, John Sopo, who I don't see at the moment, oh, there you go, thank you, John, called me up and said, hey, I heard about this great company. I went in there and interviewed, and they got me building a robot for them, taking over the project, and come and help me. And I did, and we've been working on it for six or eight months. So uh, Trevor Blackwell was the person who started off with this. I'm gonna tell his story, and right now I'm gonna switch slides here, so we're gonna see what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're going to see some videos, some old videos, a few of the new ones. Talk about the great product that it is. It's a little marketing spew. Uh, equipment list. I went through the trouble of creating the equipment list, what's actually used inside of QB itself, because I know this is a whole world of us, but it's really interesting for everyone. We, I had planned on driving in the factory, but they turned off the lights on me. So there's no lights at the factory. I can't drive a robot around tonight. But I did bring the QB along. And Mark, where's Mark? I know Mark's going to help me. Oh, there he's over there. Thank you, young man. He's going to help me drive it tonight. We'll talk a little bit about our partners. And we'll just keep that one in there, the last one about the money, because we're, we're, we're getting ready to do another kind of robots. So we're going to need more money. And it's it not free to build robots. I'm not sure if you've heard that uh, before. So. The first one is uh, one of Trevor Blackwell's uh, many, many accomplishments. And right now I'm going to try and get the video up. Let's see, that's not it. It's probably over here and I need to, no, it's all over here now. There they are, right there. This is um, Dexter. And Dexter, I'm sorry I don't have any audio on here. I'm going to try and get some more of this thing's playing. This was on Valentine's Day and this was one of Trevor's joys to get this up and running. There we go. Thank you. He's coming through this. You can hear it right now. It's coming up in the loudspeaker system. So this is one of Trevor's uh, robots. He's 2007. He got this thing up and running. Now this one over here, that's Monty. That's already a self-balancing robot. And the one on the right over here that's Dexter, and Dexter stands on feet and Monty's on wheels. You can see that. That's 2007, and he gets better as time goes on. So I'm going to go to the next video here. Now well, we're going to stop this guy. Actually, this is probably good. That's the other one now. Yep, and I'm going to see which the next one I had on the list here, which is Dexter and Monty, which is also a very cool uh, video right here. Now, you probably wonder a little bit about Dexter. Dexter is actually controlled by a human. I'm going to fast forward past a few things here and get to various people. So this is the interface right here for Dexter. And he actually, this person here is controlling Dexter and those are the screens he's seeing. 
And in a later version, which I'm not going to show you tonight, he actually uses 3D goggles to control Dexter. So this is 2008, and this is what Trevor has been working on. And you can see in the right hand there, he's controlling the robot's hand. And in the left hand, you see he has a little joystick there. He's using that to control the scissor hand in, in the left hand for um, for Dexter. So we're just going to go past this thing here and go on to the next video, because that was kind of cool. But the next video is Monty gets a Roomba. All right. Now, unfortunately, there weren't any Neatos back then, so you know, you probably would have gotten one if you wouldn't know about it. So, let me bring up the video there. Monty gets a Roomba. We know what a Roomba is. It's that little kind of vacuum cleaner. And of course, there's a human driving this 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 robot there, Monty. And he looks a little bit ominous, but it's a person driving it. There's no need to worry. And I'm going to fast forward through some of this. That's, that's quite kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Right? And I'm gonna, he's going to open the box on his own. So there's a person that's actually driving the robot. It's not autonomous. It's not doing it by itself. There's a person that's controlling the, the mechanical thing you see there. I'm going to fast forward some more. And we're going to see that there's a person moving a box around. I'm going to go a little bit more to the front. And he's taking it out of the package. Now he's opening up the package. So. I'm going to say this again, there's a person doing this from another room, okay? And he's controlling the limbs there. Uh, uh, De uh, Monty, is this Monty or Dexter? I got lost already. It's Monty. He's controlling Monty as Monty gets the robot. Um, so there it is, 2008. That's where, we're, that's where kind of, I think a lot of people saw that kind of really cool stuff that Trevor was working on. And we're going to the next slide here. And we're going to find out what is Anybot. Now this actually is what is QB, and I'm going to let this play all the way through. Because this is the current model, and uh, before the company changed hands. Now Trevor's still involved with Anybots. He still comes around, we see him, we talk to him, we ask him lots of questions. Um, but at this point, as is common in Silicon Valley, uh, sometimes the, the company gets turned over to um, other people who are going to make it commercially viable. So that means they're going to try and make money with this next robot. And so we're going to, this is a commercial that was made to talk about that robot. And it's a pretty cool commercial. I'll let it play all the way through. Here. Let me start over. You're a busy tripper. You're in several locations across the world, like on a factory, at the lab, at the office, or maybe at a warehouse as well. Traveling to all these locations can be very costly and time consuming, so to coordinate the whole operation you're stuck using email, talking on the phone, or doing boring video conferences. But what if you could do more than just watch and listen? What if you could actually move around, go anywhere and check out the things when you wanted? Almost like if you really were there, right in the middle of the action. Well, now you can. Meet anybody. Anybody is a personal remote avatar, basically a very smart webcam on two wheels that allows you to go anywhere, watch, talk, or listen to anything whenever you want that you can control from anywhere in the world using only a web browser. How? Well, first get as many Anybots as places you want to be. Then all you need is a laptop and any web browser to log in into your Anybot of choice. When you log in, your Anybot activates. Its eyes illuminate telling the world that you are now there. Now you can see and hear anything through the Anybot, but the coolest thing is that you can now move your Anybot anywhere. All you have to do is use your arrow keys to go forward, backwards, or turn. Basically, now you have become an Anybot. So you can see what's going on at the office, go to meetings, check the warehouse, or even talk to other Anybots. You can record video and take high resolution pictures, or even point at things with an onboard iSafe laser pointer. Anybody height is adjustable, so you can have face-to-face -face conversations. When you talk to someone, they can see a picture of your face or even a live video of you talking. Anybody is smart and avoids obstacles automatically, so you don't have to worry about running into people or crashing into things. If you lose your connection or run out of batteries, anybody will just stand still and quiet, waiting for you to log back in or be recharged. When you're done, just drive your Anybot back to the recharging station, log out, sit back, relax, and enjoy that margarita. 
wherever you are. Thanks to anybody, now you can be part of the action, anytime, anywhere, anybody. Your personal remote avatar. Okay, so uh, that doesn't last robot. Let me let me get all the way through so you can see this guy here. This robot, that's QB. That's actually an Alpha QB. Um, and what we have here is the third provision of QB. And technically, it's hardware revision 15. So that's how many changes we've made to QB in, in as many years. Now, 13 were made before we got there, and we had we worked on 14 and 15. And so uh, at this point, these little black dots here, down here, are gone because at that point they were using uh, vacuum form plastic molds and, and they went to injection molding, which was one of the costs that really drove up to be. And we're probably going to use that in the next run and maybe make some modifications. Um, let me go to the next last video here that I'm going to show tonight. And uh, it goes to Red Rock. Oh, this is. This is actually pretty cool. Let me turn it down a little bit here. So uh, this is one of the videos that John saw early on, and I saw early on, and we're like, is it really going to go get coffee? This, this, believe it or not, you can watch this on the internet, and it was a 20-minute excursion. They sent a robot down to Red Rock Cafe in Mountain View to get coffee. Okay, and it, it's four minutes long. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But they use a, a Wi-Fi dongle, uh, a 4G LT, to drive all the way to Deathstone, the overpass there. And it's gone through some neighborhoods, and eventually it's going to get to the downtown section. But let's see if we can survive that part there where it gets to the... It's almost there. It's a little block, I think. It's going to be at the cost of stuff. But let's see who's going to win getting to the top from here. No, it looks like I win. So we're almost there. There's downtown section. We're chatting with somebody. And come on, coffee shop. Yeah, let's move forward. There it is. Um, so QB did make it to one of the morning shows after, because of this video, and so did Daniel Kastner, he was one of the people working on QB at that point. And I'm going to fast forward all the way to, oh, um, by the way, this other, this other video here is what QB sees. That little guy right here, so he can see that person, and what you're seeing of course in the big screen is what the person He's on their screen. All right, so I'm gonna go right to the end here, and we're gonna deliver the coffee. There he goes, and it's Carl. Carl's still with us as any boss. He's a mechanical draftsman and a bit of an artist, and he works on toys on the spare time. So that's that video, and uh, I hope those are entertaining. And we'll move on to the next thing here. All right. All right, so how many people like QB? Anybody? Yeah, OK, thank you. Um, so we like QB. He's very friendly. He's safe and reliable. We throw that out there, uh, extendable. So we've had many of our partners, people who are using our robots right now in the field, and they add stuff to it. So we've had, like, uh, uh, PTZ cameras thrown on there. We've had checkout clerks, Mark Mark, yes sir. You could add a robotic claw. I could add a robotic claw. Yeah, Don't tell cool. anybody. <laughs> I know we can do that. Um, it, <laughs> it's pretty marketing. I guess he's ahead of the game. Um, and so we've got to run it on enterprise. So before we started there, you can only run it off the cloud, and now we have it running off the enterprise. So uh, for test purposes, we hand people a laptop. They say, okay, here's your, here's your Wi-Fi AP and your laptop as your server, and they can drive around the QB, which we're going to see in a little bit. 
And of course, you can test drive right now. I can't test drive because I can't get into the test drive center at this time of the night. But if you had registered already, and you had gone through the process of, hey, let me drive, they give you 15 minutes in the, in the test drive area. You can drive it around. And it's lit up at night. The reason being is we get requests from all over the world. We've got Iran, Turkey, Russia, uh, Iraq, believe it or not, uh, South Africa, just anywhere in the world, even South America, we've had people asking to test drive uh, QV. And so I'm going to go to the next slide here. And, oh, all right. Now, I don't want anybody to fall asleep after this, because I know this is what most of you came here for, is a home to revise. This is the list of the stuff that's inside of QB that makes it run. Now, there's two pages of stuff, okay? And I'm going to mention a few of the highlights that are not there that you should know. Uh, the motherboard is very hot. It works very well as a heater. I do not recommend it. If you're going to build a robot, build something with not that mother. It works for us, so. Um, the Mitex camera is probably not a good choice. It's a machine vision camera. It requires a lot of compression power, which is why we need that motherboard up there. So I wouldn't recommend that camera either. We may change it up in the near future. This hub right here, which is this company you've never heard of, which is now a business as of a year ago, built one of the first, what they call, uh, transaction, multi-transaction translators. So if you have a USB hub and you've got a low speed USB connection and a high speed USB connection, and they have to exchange data, there has to be something in the middle, and that's called a transaction translator. So that this is a multi-transaction translator hub. They call multi-TT in the industry. And if you're gonna buy one, there's Hundreds of, there's a dozen companies out there. Cypress makes them, Texas Instruments makes them. There's a half a dozen Chinese vendors that make this. So this company is out of business. It was a poor choice because of that for Inbox, but you can, it's gonna be replaced as well because they fail on a regular basis. We replace uh, probably one to two of those hubs a month in the service center. Uh, Cisco, um, that is supposed to be uh, 802.11n dongle. Uh, we don't run it in. We will soon. The Hayuku there, the LiDAR, that's a 1200 LiDAR. And I have some good news at the end, before the end of the meeting on that one for you guys here. Uh, the Vaxxon motors are also, these Swiss made motors are $1200 a piece. Okay? That's when you're buying them. One at a time. And, and am I still here? Yes, thank you. These batteries here, they're listed. We have four in the QB, four, ba four batteries, and they're 100 bucks a piece. And we buy them a lot of them. And I'll skip through the SS stuff, because you guys will build your own power supplies. And that's the equipment list. Now, I didn't include the server in there, but um, uh, we'll have more information about that the next time you see us here. So this is, uh, right now, the stories I can share with you at any box. So the first one at the top, I'm sorry I don't have a picture of Michael. Um, Michael's a great guy. Uh, I have not heard him talk. Um, he is bedridden, and he has been for over 10 years, and he has survived longer than any other person with this type of disease. He can only move his eyebrow. That is as much as he can move. And one day in, 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 a, <clears throat> in a happy moment for Michael, he took down his regular picture and I got to see his real face. And he winked at me. And that's as much as I, muscle movement as I've seen from him. However, because of our interface that works through the keyboard, he can drive our robots for us. As a matter of fact, he parts our robots for us in the test drive center. So if you are in the test drive center and you cannot park your robot, you leave it there, and if you're lucky enough, Michael will come, or if I'm lucky enough, Michael will come around and park the robot for you. And so even though he has not walked or gotten out of bed in over 10 years, he can get around the world and see the world with one of our robots. This is a great thing for Michael. The next one is Grady. I don't have Grady's last name, but um, about a year ago, uh, Grady had cancer, and he had to go to the Stanford Children's Center. and. As one of our test 
paces before I got there. Um, he was given a robot and a laptop. And he had the laptop and the robot went to his home. So if you wanted to see his mom, he would get in the he would get on the laptop and just drive the robot around until he found his mom in his house and he could talk to his mom. So that's 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 a great those are two great stories that I like talking about. Uh, Evernote. Uh, some of you who own the little new mobile devices, Android, iPhones, iPads, Android tablets, you may know about Evernote. So they make these little software packages that share stuff with the cloud. And Evernote's been growing at a phenomenal pace. And I like to think it's because of our robot. He has, they have two of our robots. And after this slide, I'm gonna show you, give you a quote that he, that he has. Um, and the other one is eSystems. Now, before I arrived there, eSystems was using our robots, but we started retrofitting them. And during the process, the robots became more reliable. So much so reliable that we were able to drive two and three around in the factory at any given point in time, which wasn't possible before we arrived there. And what that means is that when the Tesla guy came in and said, can you guys make this part for us? And he saw our robot, and he knew that he could get on one of our robots and watch the production line of parts being made for the new Tesla's car. It helped convince him that he should go with eSystems. So eSystems is using our robots as a sales tool for this. And we're happy about that, because we're, we share the room with eSystems. Now, here's Phil Levin. Uh, what he said, and basically what he's saying here is that um, he can jump onto the robot at any given moment in time and go and talk to any one of his employees. This was in Redwood City where he had the first robot and he would be in San Francisco all the time. If he wanted to, he'd just get on the robot and drive it down the hall and talk to anybody who was in the office. And if they had an idea that they wanted to ask an engineer around or a designer or a manager, is this possible? He didn't have to schedule a meeting. He didn't have to get people around the speakerphone and everybody kind of huddle around. He just turned his robot and drive to that person's cube or space and they were able to talk. And so we thank Phil for sending this to us. And it's a great, this is his own words. We didn't write this stuff for him. And the test drive. So I was hoping to take you guys around um, the eSystems factory, but they turn off the lights. And it's funny that right now we have more jobs in, in the uh, eSystems factory than we have personnel. I was talking to Bob Schiller, who does the internal logistics for this um, at 2 o'clock, because they were going to help us plan a new run of robots. And he says, we're short of people. We need to hire more people because we've got so many jobs at these systems. They have so much work. Uh, so they're going to be hiring soon enough. And they, they're production engineers and, and so forth, and materials and all that stuff. So this is kind of the panoramic view here. And there's QB right here. This guy right here is the one that, that sits and watches the factory floor. There's another one on the side door. And there's another QB in the lobby, uh, which I don't have a picture of today. But there he is. Um, and you're almost ready, old man? Yep. Okay, so go to the lap laptop. Let's make sure this thing is on. Okay, because you're going to drive it up here. This is the best part. Okay, you know how to do it? All right. Get in. So he's going to drive the robot up here. And he's going to bring it up to the front of the stage for us. Anytime you're ready, old man. Now, I didn't plant him. <laughs> He came up and asked me. There it is. Thank you, Mark. There it is. Bring it this way. So he didn't know how to drive this a few minutes ago. He came up and asked me, can I drive it? And it was there, and he drove it back to the charging station. And now on his own, because he knows how to play a first-person shooter game, he knows how to drive the robot. OK? So uh, hold on for a second, Mark. I'm going to do some demos here. So just don't move it anywhere. First one is, is the self-balancing. Okay, and you can see it, it kind of will try and find out where it, wherever it is you at last. And it'll just like keep going until it thinks it's found its home. A little bit off right now. Okay, so bring it back a little and turn it 90 degrees, please. There we go. 
Now, another thing that's happened to QB in the field is it's been attacked. You'd think, because it's so cute, that people would just kind of say, hey, you know, it's all right, but they've actually knocked it over and we've had to go pick them up and explain to people what to do. So what the engineers, the first team did, is they, they put an alarm system on. I'm going to demonstrate it. And for the people over here who didn't see it, I'm going to turn it a little bit this way. Turn it that way, Will. Mark, there we go. Now watch the eyes. And now I'm going to put this microphone next to it while I do this. I don't know if you heard the, the hundred alarm there, but there's a submarine alarm that goes off with the thing. Uh, yes, thank you. So uh, bring him up a bit, Mark, so I can kick him again. And not want to make kick. All right, here we go. And so if you're sitting in a cubicle area, it's pretty loud. And then the eyes turn red. Okay, so the last thing, I'm, and then I'm going to have you stand him up again, is if somebody decides that they want to walk away with QB. What you may have not seen or noticed is that the parking brake is down now. And I can actually let him sit. All right, go ahead and stand him up. There we go, thank you. So those are a few of the improvements that the last team made before they uh, before they uh, finished up with QB, and we're working on new ones right now. Um, one of the many things I'm going to demonstrate one right now, which I think everyone in the room can appreciate here, is, and we used a 3D printer for this, by the way, is a fan. There was no fan on QB before we arrived, and to improve the liability of the robot, we had. And we improved it 50% by just installing a fan. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because I want to make sure that, you know, especially some of the younger people in the crowd, if you have a checklist of stuff that you have to do, check your checklist twice, okay? Because this is an important thing that, you know, the very hot motherboard and the batteries get very hot and the LiDAR is very hot, but there was no cooling system on it. So that was the one of many, many things. And I'm going to leave this off right now, and I'm going to kind of pass this around. Now, uh, it's epoxy down at this point, and the next revision is probably going to have some sort of change to the front cover so we can put on a different one, or we may epoxy down the out of the side. So I'm going to go over here and head to this young man over here. Go ahead and just pass it around for people look at it. And I'm going to talk quickly about our partners here. Um, collaboration partners. Innovation Matrix is in Japan, and they have offices here in California. They're about three blocks from us. And uh, they're a great partner because they help us with a bit of that international market. Mark, I'm going to let you count this way. Watch. He still needs help. So, oh, I almost forgot to bring Dilbert. Uh, October 26th of last year, we were in Dilbert. And I'm sorry I didn't put that up on the, on the slides today. But getting back to Innovation Matrix. Innovation Matrix is, is great. Um, they, they're actually selling more robots than anybody else right now for us. And um, single point of contact is funny because they actually answer our telephones for us. And they have a robot in there. And so, if you need technical support, or if they offer technical support for you, a single point of contact, you can use our robot to talk to a real human at a technical service center in California, 24 hours a day. That's what single point of contact does. So it's a new kind of service center, so it's, it doesn't go to India or some other country where they're learning English. and. I, I, took, I forgot Elance. Elance uh, is working on a system for us where they actually will man um, lobbies with our robots. And, and we're, we're making some changes and we hope to be catch up with them pretty soon again. And I'm going to mention major teleconferencing company, companies. Now, the contracts aren't finalized. 
but I can tell you that from what I've been told, I wasn't there at the meetings, that a few of the companies were kind of jumping up and down. And this is what they told me. We duct taped a camera to QB. So this teleconferencing company, one of the big ones, duct taped a camera to our robot, saw that it was able to balance, and they were just so ecstatic, so happy, and they said, we're going to get back to you guys. We really are. Mark, you want to try in the back of the room over there? I think there's people over there I haven't seen it yet. Okay, so last one I'm going to mention here before we get on. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention something to him. See the shift key there? Press the shift key. Yes, that's the down camera. That's the down camera. That'll help you navigate. I'm so sorry. I forgot about that. If you want to, after I'm done here, you want to go over there and drive it, you can. Um, E-Systems. You saw their factory floor. Uh, they are away from our manufacturer here in the U.S. 80% of the waveform so that are used in factories around the world are made by E-Systems. Uh, the last contract they had was a high-precision waveform, which means there was no lubricants, no plastics, no outgassing from this waveform. Completely mechanical, and so it's high-precision. They get a lot of money for this thing. It's a beautiful thing. And there's one in the lobby. Restoration robotics. Now, that's an odd story. So for some of you persons in the room who may be, let's say, um, having a receding hairline, you may have heard about these new techniques where they will surgically remove hair from the back of your head and put it in the front of your head. Those are made about 20 feet from where I sit. It's a $400,000 robotics machine. Again, what it does is you sit down, it takes, takes hair from the back of your head, and it transplants it in the front of your head. At the end of the day, when you leave the room, you'll have hair in the front of your head. That's restoration robotics. And we all know Tesla. Tesla's gonna help bring in electronic cars to the world. Electrical cars, electric cars. All right, so last slide, and I believe this is the last one. I wanted to mention quickly that uh, Angel uh, Villafuente, Fuerte, his name is on the bottom right there, has created a few of the little robot drawings you see here peppered throughout my talk. And I want to make sure to give him a mention. He actually works in the um, receiving room for eSystems. And so one day I was wandering through and, and I noticed he was a very good artist and I said, well, oh, that's great, you gotta draw some. And the next day he handed me those, ro those drawings. They're really phenomenal. He just, he took out a, a, an address label and a, black, and a black pen and he drew. And I thought that was pretty good. Mark, thanks for driving it. Um, how much money are we gonna need in the future? Well, the estimates are that we're going to need between two and six million dollars to make another run of robots. And we do burn through money pretty quick there, as a lot of startups do. And I want to thank everybody for coming to see me tonight and see if who's, anybody has got any questions here. Whoa. Okay. I'll yeah, John, you want to say something? No, no, let me do, do the microphone. Nobody yeah, he's going to give John. He's good. Oh yeah, let me, you know, the batteries were low. Let me see if I can get the batteries are charged up enough so we can see this thing driving around. How are the batteries there? Oh, that's beautiful. Let's take it out. So we're going to come this way. Follow me. And I'm going to put this up on the screen because John is suggesting, because this is really cool. You can actually see what Mark's doing here. I'm going to put it on this. Hopefully, this Windows things won't complain too much. Jess, let me make that statement here. What? Um, I can't so, hear you from that. Okay, if you go to the end, website, there's a test center, and if you sign up, anybody can go on and get yeah. 15 minutes to experiment and try to run a robot. Um, so, you know, parents with kids, it's a, basically get to play Smash with or something. Yeah, I'll see that. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people go there and just try it and see what you know, yeah, they can do with the robot. Uh, so unfortunately, it's, it's pretty safe, so not too much, but you know, we've got a huge log that people have actually been successfully oh, pushing, which is pretty amazing. Uh, questions? Anybody? Question. Okay, David. The guy in the back, yes. Let's see what. Let's see. How long does the um, 
how long does it, what's the endurance of the robot? How long can it run on a single battery charge? Uh, good question. That is, um, it varies, but generally about uh, two to four hours. Before, if, two. There was, if there was something that you had to redesign on this one, you know, to make it you know, no longer or faster, you know, what would be the one thing that you would do differently in designing QB? Um, to make it a better robot, given the learning you have now. And, um, if, I, if I take, I, I learn a lot of stuff, but John wants to answer that question. So he's, or, he's the one who's in charge of this thing, so. So, um, a lot of things, I mean, you know, the original design was the a three-year-old design, so no. like moving over to an OS processor, uh, like an Exynos 5 or something like this, uh, changing the camera systems, just, just you know, updated to a lot more of the modern technology, uh, reducing the drive system cost. There's a there's a ton of, of, of little little minutia like connector right. connectors coming loose for us a major hurdle. Well, okay. So so moving to something like like a low power arm would actually extend our uh, battery. Most of our power goes entirely on the telephone which is being used for compression. So if we had a hardware compression system, then you know, we get an enormous power savings. We probably put Google a battery on the existing batteries. So, but, you know, a lot of, I mean, not so much performance enhancement, oh, yeah, yeah. as much as cost reduction is going to be. Yeah. Uh, as well as improving the bigger screen, you know, better video quality, the, the obvious thing. So, so we've got some stuff in the R&D that fixes a lot of these things. How much does this one cost? Well, originally QB was um, fifteen thousand, and the price has gone down for QB. But uh, right now we're only selling them as retrofit units. So it's funny because as the price has gone down now, there's been a lot of demand. But the retrofit units are eight thousand dollars. So they essentially half of what they were originally. Next question, young man. Uh. How did QB get the coffee? How did QB get coffee? Good question. So what QB did is he left where he was at and he, you know, drove down to downtown Mountain View. He went into a coffee shop, which had steps, so somebody had to help him up the steps. How far did he, how far did he, how far did he go? I believe he went a mile or so to get from Y Combinator. Uh, to the coffee shop, and then they served him coffee, and he came back with the coffee in a bag. How did he hold the bag? What about? What? How did he hold the bag? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The white combinator is one black from the old hacker dojo, like being told to remind you. Okay, it's up, over here in the back corner. Yes, sir. I'm not sure whether you already mentioned uh, the operating system. What's the operating system is using? Oh. Okay, so to answer your question, um, the robot that you see in front of you, um, it runs on FreeBSD, um, in the main body is the controlling part, and then um, the other portions that control it are written in Python and JavaScript, so the cloud port is all uh, portions are written in Python and JavaScript. So the cloud is actually running something called node, node.js, which is kind of a server of types. And um, the head runs Linux. There's a friendly arm in the head that, that keeps the head coordinated for things that it is. Um, overwhelmingly, you can expect if it hits a hard media, like a hard disk, it's going to be Python. If it's going to be in memory, like in a cloud, then it's going to be JavaScript. That, that's as clear as I can get without. It's it's mostly homegrown. All the software it is based on the robots you saw early uh, tonight, earlier in my talk. Um, so Trevor wrote up a lot of that custom. There's a lot of custom software. It's it's a bit entangled. It's a bit of a monolith. And our job as a second Anybots team is to. Detangle and demonolith. 
and make it modular and portable and useful. Next question, any other questions for the next person? Yes. Oh, young man, yes. Yes, it's a little, it's a little button, there we go. Question. How long should it take for him to go get the coffee? How long did it take him to get the coffee? I don't know, I wasn't there. But I believe it took him about 40 minutes to get the coffee. So he had to, to drive or roll there on, on the robot, and the robot had to come back. So remember, there's somebody driving QB. You know? So it was about 40 minutes total, round trip. Um, we have another, okay. Yeah. Alan, were you going to say something about the laser particularly? Did somebody want me to comment about the laser particularly? No. <laughs> Announcement about and please help me. Okuyu. Oh yes. Oh yes. The lidar. Okay. So um, I just saw the gentleman in the back with the blue shirt. It's all um, David, right? No. He's, he's, you, yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. You. Okay. So he stand up for a second, will you? This gentleman that you're looking at right here, he's the hacker dojo robotics guy, he actually runs a Hacker Dojo robotics team. And he probably came to say hi, it's good to see you tonight. And the news I wanted to... to, to oh, okay, alright, it's a team, thank you. I forgot, thank you, it's a team. Please say that again so people know. Yeah, I, I, you know, I serve the team, I try to help the team hack, hack robots more effectively than like Okay, so the good news I have tonight is that at E-Systems we're cleaning house right now and I've been instructed to uh, get rid of stuff we don't need. And that includes stuff at any box. Yes, yes, I see you in the back there. Um, so at the next meeting when you guys come here, we will have some of the older versions of the USB hub, not the new ones, the older ones, because they actually bought 100 USB hubs, and they're brand new in the clamshell, in the new box, and we didn't use them at all, and they've already been scrapped. So they're gonna go, and I've got a few LiDARs, that are not completely 100%. That's why we pulled them out of the robots, but they're still functional. And I have lots of power supplies that they didn't use, including some odd 5 volt, 55 amp power supplies, which we're still trying to decide if we want to keep them or not. And we've got a, we've got a bunch of hardware that is going to go out the door. And I've already talked to management, and they said, okay, we will donate them. So. Um, there's you and one of our programmers, Joe, he's taking them to the high school in Palo Alto, or the grade school in Palo Alto, and some of the people in receiving told us they have some high school programs too, and I'm going to bring some here, because I asked specifically to bring that excess hardware here to the home room robotics. So I believe, if not by next month, the, next, the month that follows, the good news is that we will bring you free. A lot of it's like not been used. It's just they bought it, they were going to use it, and then they said, no, it's not going to work for the production run, and then they scrapped it. So they scrapped thousands of dollars worth of equipment in the first production run, and I either throw it in the garbage or I donate it, and my choice is to donate it. So that's the good news. All right. Just so everybody knows, the new rule for this year is that when we raffle stuff off, which is the way we transfer equipment, you have to be a club member to receive the, the rest of the equipment. So if you're not a member, if you're interested in maybe picking up a LiDAR, um, maybe you want to join. Okay, thank you. All right, so there you go. The next gentleman question, yes. You, you have the green microphone in your hand. Well, sure. I have a question. So what happened to the humanoid robots that you showed in your presentation? The humanoid robots didn't all make it with us. So there's um, Dexter, which didn't come with us. Monty did not come with us, but we did bring QA, and I did. I don't have a picture of QA. And QA is is a is a version of Monty without arms. So there's there's a, there's videos out there of QA on the internet, and Q, there are only two QAs made, and we have one of the two QAs in house, and we have um, two of the original uh, first prototypes. So we have the um, QB. 12, 13, and 14 still in the house, and then everything below 24 was scrapped before we arrived. So we have some history that we've saved, and is that, is that ask your question? Now, Trevor still, I'm hoping Trevor still has Dexter and, and Monty, I'm pretty sure he does, 
as a part of creation. Oh, in case you haven't seen any of Trevor Blackwell's video, I urge you to. He's got a lot of fun stuff on there. Somebody took his balance board system and he was giving away the software for the balance board system back then. It's no longer available. We can't find a copy, the open source copy that he put out there. But um, he did put that out there and somebody built a, um, a prototype sandwich that Trevor is writing in one of the videos that's online. That's pretty cool. Right? Good. Are there any last questions? Okay, I'd like to thank Jesse here for coming and giving us a wonderful presentation. And for those of you who don't know, Trevor it, it has been a member of the club. He just got a little busy doing some real robotics, so he, he sort of dropped out. Okay, without any okay, further ado, you can talk what we're going to do is we're going to shut down the meeting for tonight. We're going to go into what we call random access, where we just sort of wander around, talk, and ask questions. And uh, we'll be kicked out of here around 10. Okay? Thank you very much.